Hello. So we are on day five, which is neutrals. And neutrals are not generally what I go for with my makeup. So while this is what is probably most common for other people, this is probably the thing that is going to take me the most out of my comfort zone initially. Fortunately, one of the girls who I work with who lives in the Philippines, hi Ja, um, she sent me an image and asked me if I could recreate it. So also, just sort of with good timing, I got my BoxyCharm today. So if you're not familiar with, Bo by the way, I obviously, but I still have to say it, this isn't sponsored. I bought the BoxyCharm myself. I've been subscribing to it since last December and I'm pretty obsessed with BoxyCharm. I definitely tell everyone about it when I'm talking about makeup. I think that as far as subscription boxes go, if you're into makeup, they're the best. You get five to six full-size products every month. So if subscription boxes are something you're interested in, BoxyCharm is really cool. So my BoxyCharm came with the Pretty Vulgar Nightingale uh, palette, which is a bunch of neutral shades and pretty perfect for the look that she sent. However, I am going to also go into my Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills and use Primavera in the center of the look. So when I get there, but when you get BoxyCharm, it just comes with an insert that has all of the information in it and the prices. So it's $21 a month but just this palette is worth $35. So the palette alone pays for it. I'm gonna try to use all of the products from the BoxyCharm. The only product that I'm a little nervous about is the eyeliner. So I'm gonna go over the products real quick and just show you what they are. It's the palette and then it's a brush set of three brushes. And these are by Alamar Cosmetics and I also got the BoxyCharm a few months ago that had the Alamar palette, which I'll be using at some point. And then Butter London Stroke of Wow Eyeliner. And this is the product I'm concerned about because it's a liquid eyeliner, but it has the weird little, little like roller ball tip. So that is something that I thought was really gimmicky and thought it was gonna go away really fast and it didn't, it's still around. And then Laura Geller New York. I haven't ever tried anything from Laura Geller because it's relatively expensive. Um, so this is the Baked and Brighton Blush in Tropic Hues. And it's pretty, I tend to like shiny blushes, so it should be good. And then Hank and Henry. I've also never tried anything from Hank and Henry. This is a liquid lipstick in Petal Pusher. So this is really cool. I don't know how well you'll be able to tell on camera, but it looks it, like it's shaped to look like it's a bullet lipstick. And then it's actually a liquid lipstick that smells really good. I didn't open it all the way up earlier. It smells really good. It smells kind of vanilla-y maybe. So um, I'm not going to insert an image of the eye look that she wants me to recreate just because it looks like it's somebody's Instagram photo and I don't know who she got it from. If she, um, I'll message her and if I can find out whose Instagram it is so that I can tag them and give them credit for the photo, then I will. Otherwise, I'm just going to do my best and you'll just have to trust that it is what I was supposed to be recreating. Okay, so I actually need to blow my nose and I'm not gonna do that on camera. So I will be right back. Okay, so allergies. I love the fall. Autumn is definitely my favorite season, but my allergies have been so bad this year. They've been bad all year. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in with the makeup. I've already done my base. I used the Clinique Acne Solutions 
foundation in alabaster again the it cosmetics bye bye pores for powder urban decay primer potion for my eye primer the eyebrows i did use a different product today i used the ulta brow pomade in warm brown so they don't really match but that's fine i'm all about my brows looking natural i don't need instagram brows so i'm good with it um, so i'm going to start out i'm just going to go into pillow fight which is this shade in the middle and just set down a base so i know that my videos so far have been predominantly talking about anxiety and depression i'm feeling like I'm in a pretty decent mood today, which may be due to the extensive amount of sleep that I got. I had said in my last video that I was going to set an alarm and start going to bed and getting up at the same time. Instead, I woke up this morning at 8.30 when my doctor's office called me to tell me that they were canceling my appointment because my doctor called off sick. And then I turned off my alarm because I thought that I was going to stay up at that point, went back to sleep, and then slept until after 11 p.m. So, and yes, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. And I had already slept some before that. So it's, it was a lot of sleep. And now my plan for fixing that is to stay up all night tonight and all day tomorrow so that I can go to bed at a decent time tomorrow night so that I can get back on track because otherwise I will never get back to a good place. So this is going to be a little more of a tutorial style. It's not technically a tutorial, but sort of more along those lines just so that I can go over how to do the look and sort of talk myself through it since I am also just going off of an image. So I'm going to put hide and seek, which is this light, cool brown. I'm just going to do that all through the crease on both eyes. So I will try to talk some between this because I don't like to edit out. I know that it's really it makes my videos a lot longer than most other beauty videos but when I started doing makeup I really didn't understand how long it takes to do a full look because when you watch beauty tutorials they spend five minutes blending things but then they edit it out so you can't tell how long they've actually spent editing so I also, I have hooded eyes. Hooded eyes are fairly common. If you don't know what hooded eyes are, it's where this portion of my lid, the top part of my lid comes over it. And you can still, I still have a decent amount of lid space under here. Um, some people have hoods that come literally all the way down to their lash line. So it does mean that when I do looks, I try to go up above the crease so that when my eyes are open, you can still see the effect if it's like a smoky eye or if it's colors. And especially since I like to do more colorful looks most of the time, if I'm just gonna have all of the color hid underneath my crease, then there's not much point. It does also mean that I don't do cut creases very often because as soon as I open my eye, you're not really able to see the cut crease anyway. So doing a cut crease is mostly just for the sake of a photo. These brushes are really nice, by the way. This is a really, really soft blending brush. I like it. So it, these eyeshadows are also really good. I have used the uh, blush from Pretty Vulgar and then I use a gel eyeliner. And really the thing that I have been drawn to about Pretty Vulgar is that they have, first of all, a fun name, but also they have really attractive packaging. Like They have packaging that I want to put out 
for display. And so that's always, it's always nice when you have makeup that you, if you're not using it, it has a dual purpose. I, my eyeliner, I thought was right in front of me. So this is the eyeliner, it's pretty cute. It's like a little, looks like a little pen pot has a little leaf on it or not a leaf a little feather on it like a little quill it says pretty vulgar so pretty adorable <clears throat> all right so now I am going to go in with the packing brush and I want to darken up the inner third and the outer third so I'm going to start out by going in with flip out uh, so if your skin tone is darker than mine, which a lot of people's skin tone is darker than mine, then you're going to want to use colors that are a little bit deeper, especially for your transition color, which is the color that I put down initially. It, so I also feel like people are expected to know what makeup terms are when they're watching any sort of tutorial and it, it's just not something I get that a lot of people are going to know because they've watched other tutorials and you don't want to be super redundant but things like transition shade you see transition shade all the time and there are lots of palettes especially like the little wet and mild palettes that say this color is your transition color and I I know that it's sort of if you know what transition means you can figure out what it means but the transition color is just the shade that should take you from whatever color you're putting on your lid and blend up into your natural skin tone so it bothers me a little bit that there are specific transition shades in some of the palettes that are really my skin tone. Like they're the perfect skin tone for me because I am very fair. And if you have a medium or deep skin tone and you put that on as a transition shade, you're gonna look like a crazy person. So when it comes to your transition shade it's just about knowing your own skin tone and being able to figure out what is going to go best to go in and out of that so I am going to darken that up even more I'm actually going to bring so that shade is called flip out I'm going to bring it in a little more towards the middle here the look that she sent me is kind of a halo eye so this middle part is going to be getting the primavera from the modern renaissance palette and probably this whole look could have been done with the modern renaissance palette but i wanted to try out the stuff from boxycharm so it just seemed to all be sort of perfect that she sent me that image yesterday and i got my Boxy charm today, and I'm always really excited to use my boxy charm anyway. So then I want to darken this up a little bit more on this outer corner here in the outer V. So I'm going to use Swoop, which is this dark brown here. So I also have been trying to figure out today what I want to do for the next few days. I have a new lens coming because if you haven't noticed the lens that I have doesn't like to autofocus while I'm filming and so I found a refurbished one for super super inexpensive on Amazon so that but that's not coming until Tuesday which means that there are several days between now and then and I don't want to just not film in the meantime this color is not blending quite as well which might just be the brush 
is a packing brush it's not really a blending brush so we'll go over it and blend it in a second so I'm just gonna go back with the blending brush I'm trying to do this whole look using just the brushes that came in boxycharm so we'll see how that goes oh yeah it's it actually blends really well with this there's a little bit of fallout not too much I'll just clean it up at the end so yeah the the video quality as I do this will get better my editing skills will get better and hopefully as my anxiety and depression kind of subsides a little bit just in general the videos will get better because I will be feeling better so I'm gonna go back with flip out which is that first sort of cool brown color that I had and just go in the middle really lightly just so that I can make sure that there's gonna be a good shading in between those a good transition and then I'm gonna go up a little bit higher again just so that when my eyes are open you'll be able to see that there are colors there so having hooded eyes also means that using an eye primer is just knock stuff over oops is pretty necessary if I don't use some sort of an eye primer then all of the shadow from the bottom is just gonna transfer to the top and that's not cute so it is what it is um for the halo, I'm actually going to go back in with my eye primer, and this is the Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden. You could also use a concealer. You can use your foundation if you have a thicker foundation. I, I don't know that I necessarily recommend that, but if you don't have something else to use, you are going to want to use something that is lighter. So if you are, if you have a deep skin tone and you use a concealer, that is your skin tone then it's not going to work as well either so this is the best color that i can use for this and it's definitely it's one of the times that i would recommend using a lighter tone and then i'm going to use that packing brush i'm just going to Pat that out a little bit. And then I'm going to use Primavera from the ABH palette, which is, oops, this shade here. <clears throat> These brushes that come in the ABH palettes, by the way, are my least favorite brushes that come with any palette. I do feel like if I'm spending $42 for a palette that either don't give me a brush at all because if I'm spending $42 for a palette I probably have some brushes and make the palette a few dollars less or give me a brush that is useful the the brushes that come in the ABH palettes I love ABH absolutely but the brushes are just really really stiff also my dog is walking around outside of the room I didn't I like to not put him in his crate as much as possible I just have a little Boston Terrier and usually I do like so far I have been putting him in his crate when I'm filming and today I decided to try to leave him out because generally when I'm in here doing my makeup I'm not talking and so he just goes and lays down in the living room plays with his toys but because he can hear me in here talking he keeps running back and forth down the hallway so i'm just gonna blend this in a little bit i go back and forth so this is the point where i might have to use another brush because 
These are not great for trying to use this packing brush. Let's see if I can use that to blend these edges a little bit. I just don't want it to be such a harsh center. The reason I decided to use the Primavera is because none of the shades that are in the Pretty Vulgar palette are this bright and the eye look that she sent me definitely is very bright in the middle. So I'm going to go back with the blending brush and I'm going to go into Flip Out again and I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit to help with that blend and the transition so that it's a center halo and not just now me having a shimmer shade across my whole lid. Okay, and I'll try to, I don't have my camera on a tripod right now. I should show you my setup that I have. Then I'll try to zoom in so that you can see what it is. Okay, that clicking sound that you hear when I'm zooming in and out that sound is why i'm getting a new lens and it's really annoying so i'm looking forward to having a new lens all right so i'm just going to take she has dark brown underneath so i'm going to go back to that packing brush and I'm gonna use Swoop. Actually, I might use After Midnight, which is this middle sort of black, black and brown that's here and go underneath. Just tap that off. Can you tell that I'm putting off using the eyeliner because I'm afraid that it's gonna be a disaster and completely ruin this look. We'll see how it goes. But I definitely, because I want to try to use everything that's in here. At least this once. And who knows, maybe I'll try it and it will be like the most magnificent, impressive thing I've ever experienced but I kind of doubt it. Okay, let's pray to the gods and try to get rid of this fallout. All right. So it's time. We're gonna try the Butter London Stroke of Wow Roll-On Precision Liner. That is a really long name in pitch black. Okay. Hold my breath, wish me luck. Okay, I really want to do a wing for this look and I'm, I'm not sure I can do a wing with this eyeliner, but we're gonna find out. Okay, so wings are done. Normally I would put on my lashes at the end, but I figured since I was off camera anyway, I would go ahead and put my lashes on. I used the, these are some lashes. I picked them up when I was in Seattle and I picked them up from Pinoche Clothing Company who puts their sticker over the name, but it's Eiffel Lash and these are in style 217. These were really inexpensive. They were like $3 and this is the first time I've used them. I wish I would have used them while I was there 
because I probably would have gone back and gotten more because they're definitely going to be able to be used several times and they have the really nice thin band that I like so it, it is what it is I might see if I can find the brand online somewhere and buy from them directly the glue that I use for my eyelashes is the TARDIS Pro and I prefer the clear. A lot of people like black, but I don't always use black eyeliner. So if I use black glue over a different color eyeliner, then it just looks weird and that's not what I'm going for. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my eyes. I'm gonna go back with that packing brush and I'm gonna go into flip out and I'm just gonna smoke out underneath here a little bit and soften it up some. And then I am gonna use a pencil liner in my waterline, even though it didn't come with one and I was trying to stick with BoxyCharm items, but I need something in my waterline with this look. And obviously I wasn't prepared. I just had my pencil sitting here and I don't know where it went. Magical disappearing products. Okay, maybe I'm not using a pencil. Oh, there it is. Okay, I thought this was a different one. It is the one I wanted. So I'm going to use Alkaline in the Urban Decay 24-7. I actually do not own a brown eyeliner of any kind in gel. I have the one from Bang Beauty that I use for my eyebrows that I was really excited when I got it because I thought I was finally going to have a brown gel eyeliner and then it didn't work as an eyeliner at all. So this is the only eyeliner that I have that really fits unless I wanted to go in with a black and I feel like black is just going to be too harsh for this look. And while this is not a neutral and technically is probably cheating a little bit, it's going to be fine. It's weird to put on pencil liner after I've put on lashes. It's not normally how that works. Okay, so let's move on to the Laura Geller blush. I will tell you the prices of all of these at the end. I realize I only told you how much the Pretty Vulgar palette was. And then for this, I am going to use just a regular blush brush. This one is an Ulta brush, but any blush brush will work. This is a little bit powdery. It's kind of went everywhere. So hopefully, oh, it's not, I was worried that it was going to be like crazy pigmented, but it's not, it's nice. It's a nice kind of subtle pink tone. I like it. I used to only wear gel blushes. And I think it's because growing up, my mom didn't use blush. She would actually just use lipstick, like a red lipstick and then smear it out. So that was how I learned to do blush. And as a result, it meant that I ended up using gel blushes when they came out. Uh, Pixie came out with one and it was my favorite. And then for highlighter, I'm going to use the ABH Amrezy highlighter, which if you haven't seen this is a gorgeous and it looks unused. It's been used plenty and I absolutely love it. And again, I'm just, so this is technically a contour brush. This is Royal and Lang Nickel, but I like to use this brush for my highlighter. And 
after not using highlighter yesterday for my all matte look, I'm not skipping highlighter today, even with the glowy blush. It's just not enough. I want to be super glowy. I really, I love glowy looks and which is good because I have fairly dry skin in like this area. So using matte foundations is not always the best plan. So if I can have glowy foundations, I don't know how well that's picking up on camera, but that is really pretty. I love this highlighter. <clears throat> All right, so now we're gonna go in with the Hank and Henry lipstick. So just, it's a nice triangle applicator. So it's a really interesting formula. It's really thin somehow. It doesn't feel like I have anything on my lips, which is unusual with a liquid lipstick. It's not really sticky at all. It smells really good. We'll see what it wears like. So this is the final look. I'm going to go over the cost of the items from the BoxyCharm if I had bought them individually. And then I'll put my link for BoxyCharm in the description box. And if you if you decide to use my link, I do get points or something. I don't really know because despite the fact that I send people my link and I've had friends sign up for it, I don't do it to try to earn something, and if you just go to BoxyCharm.com and sign up, I still am all about it, whether I get anything out of it or not. So the Pretty Vulgar palette was $35, the blush would be $28, the brushes would be $18, the Hank and Henry liquid lipstick would be 17 and the Butter London Stroke of Wow roll-on liner, which while the second I was surprisingly easier and maybe if I got used to this, I would really like it. I still don't think that something that worked needed to be reinvented and I still think it's gimmicky, but $19 if you wanted that. The formula is really nice. Um, it's more of like a vinyl eyeliner and I prefer matte eyeliners, but it's not, not smearing. It's not doing anything weird. It went on really smooth. It's just a strange applicator. And I guess anytime you're used to doing something and then you're using something new, it's going to be strange. So, and I really I like these lashes. I'm really sad that I don't have more. I'm tempted to put mascara on them, but I'm not actually going anywhere and I want to be able to save them and reuse them. So you can put mascara on lashes and still reuse them, but it's going to wear them out quicker. And the longer I can make my lashes last, the better. I may also put a little more Primavera in the middle of my eyes for my photos just because the photo she sent me was a little brighter in the middle. I prefer it a little more toned down so we'll see. Anyway I uh, thank you for hanging out with me and hopefully this was helpful in some way and I appreciate you being here even though I'm not talking about anxiety and depression today. So thank you all and if you would like to subscribe that would be awesome. If not, that's absolutely fine too. Thanks. Bye. <music>